Good morning, my Real News Media TV family. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning, and I'm wishing for everyone a wonderful and a productive day. And in the news this morning, Hanover's Most Wanted surrenders to police. Hanover's Most Wanted Man, 24-year-old Tawin Gunning, otherwise known as the Tuffy, has turned himself into the police. Gunnin, a laborer from Rock Spring in the parish, surrendered on Tuesday, accompanied by his attorney. The police said that Gunnin has been on the run since December 2023, following his alleged involvement in a murder in Green Island. It is further alleged that he was also involved in a shootout with the police on April 2, 2024, during which he escaped. The police said he is now facing charges for both incidents. He has also been identified as a person of interest in several other gun-related crimes that have occurred in Hanover. Investigation into those matters are ongoing. Commenting on the arrest, Acting Assistant Commissioner of Police Wayne Joseph, who leads the Criminal Investigations Branch, commended the detectives in Area 1 for their outstanding investigative work, which he believes has contributed significantly to these developments. More individuals are turning themselves in to law enforcement, driven by the strong cases being brought against them. This is a testament to the quality of investigative work on the ground, coupled with the effective communication from the Constabular Communications Network, which has raised a greater awareness about ongoing investigations, the acting ACP said. The police have made a significant progress in recent weeks, with several wanted men being apprehended across Area 1. Among them is Joseph McKenzie, also known as the Jail, who was arrested in St. James on August 25, 2024, and charged with three murders, one shooting, and the possession of a prohibited weapon. Likewise, Michael Williams, otherwise called the Dry Goods, was apprehended in Bogue St. James on September 14, 2024, and is also facing murder charges. Tallman charged with a larceny of motor vehicle. A man who goes by the alias a Tallman is to face the court to answer to the charge of larceny of motor vehicle following his arrest in Westmoreland on Monday, September 2. Charged is 32 year old Romel Johnson of Leeds District in Santa Cruz, St. Elizabeth. According to the police, about 10 30 p.m. on Wednesday, July 24, the complainant parked at the securely locked his Toyota Voxy motor car in his yard and retired to bed. Upon waking about 7 a.m. the following morning, the complainant discovered that the vehicle was missing. A report was made and with the help of technology, the police intercepted the motor vehicle in Santa Cruz, St. Elizabeth. Johnson, however, managed to escape, the police said. He was apprehended on Monday, September 2 and was subsequently charged after a question and answer session that was conducted in the presence of his attorney. His court date is being finalized. Integrity Commission invites FID to probe its report on Prime Minister Holness's funds. The Integrity Commission has invited the Financial Investigations Division to examine its investigation report into the statutory declarations submitted by Prime Minister Andrew Holness for the years 2019 to 2022. The Commission is recommending that the FID probes the funding and the operations of companies associated with Mr. Holness, namely Positive Media, Positive Jamaica Foundation, and the Green Emerald. In a special report tabled alongside its investigation report, the Commission urged the Parliament to support its referral to the FID, indicating that the declarations for 2021 and 2022 cannot be certified until the FID has completed its work. The Commission cited, among other areas of concern, deposits and withdrawals to three companies to which the Prime Minister was connected or had a financial interest in, namely Imperium, Positive Media, and the Estate Bridge. It said a forensic examination of bank accounts attributable to Mr. Holness and that the reference to companies for the period January 1, 2020 to June 13, 2023 revealed intercompany deposits of just over $473 million and withdrawals of just over $427 million. 
It added that it is up to the FID to determine whether the companies named are operating within the parameters of the laws of Jamaica. The Commission has also made a recommendations for Tax Administration Jamaica and the Financial Services Commission to probe aspects of the report. In an impassioned statement to the House of Representatives on Tuesday afternoon, Prime Minister Andrew Holness pledged to seek legal advice on the Integrity Commission's report. I will take legal advice on this report and its recommendations, including recommendations for referral to other entities. And Mr. Speaker, I will continue to pray to God for guidance and strength as I continue to lead Jamaica. I have worked hard, wisely, and honestly to achieve whatever I have. I have always sought to discharge my duties with respect and dignity. Even for those who try to bring me down, and do personal harm to my reputation. The weaponization of accusations of corruption is nothing new in politics. However, even the most skeptical onlooker must conclude that the handling of this matter, the time it has taken, the public resources used to pursue it, raise cause for concern on many levels. The current context of its operations does weaken its credibility. We must also ensure that the Commission itself is efficient and pays due regard to the use of public funds and the time and resources required of public officials to comply. To this end, the law must ensure that the work of the Commission focuses on relevant, significant and material issues. Golden suggests the Prime Minister misled the country over illicit enrichment probe. Opposition leader Mark Golding has suggested that Prime Minister Andrew Holness misled the country when he told the media last year that he wasn't aware of any Jamaica Labour Party parliamentarians being under investigation for illicit enrichment. The People's National Party president was speaking with the news following the tabling of the 179-page Integrity Commission report in Parliament on Tuesday. While he refused to make a substantive comment pending further examination of the report, Golden shared, it's clear that the Prime Minister has been under investigation for illicit enrichment and he has known it since May in 2023. There's a recommendation that the matter be sent to the Financial Investigations Division, which is a law enforcement agency, for further investigation and that his statutory declarations cannot be certified until these issues are resolved, so that's a very serious matter, he continued. Golding noted that Holness had previously denied awareness that any of his party members were involved in an illicit enrichment probe. And, um we're going to have to study it carefully before we make any substantive comment on it. But it's clear that the Prime Minister has been under investigation for illicit enrichment. Um, and he's known it since May 2023. And there's a recommendation that the matter be sent to the Financial Investigations Division, which is a law enforcement agency, for further investigation. And that his statutory declarations cannot be certified until these issues. So that's a very serious matter because the Prime Minister himself publicly stated that he wasn't aware of anyone on his side who was under investigation for this enrichment when he himself was one of the six who are now eight. The Prime Minister commented. Policeman in St. Catherine accused of sexual assault remanded. A St. Catherine-based policeman accused of sexually assaulting a woman and attempting to flee Jamaica was remanded when he appeared in a parish court on Tuesday. The cop who is assigned to the Bogwalker police station is facing charges of causing grievous bodily harm, abduction, cruelty to a child and rape. He was ordered to return to the court on Friday, September 20. He is being represented by attorney at law Richard Lynch. Allegations are that the policeman sexually assaulted the female complainant. A report was made and an investigation was launched, with a file being submitted to the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions, which ruled that the couple should be charged. 
The policeman was held up Friday, September 13, as he was reportedly trying to leave the island. Guys, thanks for watching. Please join us this afternoon at 2 p.m. for another news update.